Nap time and catastrophes. Rousing connections. There are a few things that everyone appreciates. One of these things? A good night's sleep. Though a subjective thing, it will always be true. No one enjoys fatigue, a slow brain, or trouble focusing. Everyone appreciates being clear-headed, rested, and ready. Yep, across the board. Everyone will be better off in some way, reinvigorated and alert, after a good night's sleep or a solid nap. And unfortunately, for a multitude of reasons, and for a large percentage of people, there are few things that have become more unattainable than adequate sleep. Poor sleep can be caused by everything from too much physical exertion, mental stress, boredom, depression, to, as any parent can tell you, raising young children. And the numbers prove it. Let me sleep on it. Humans are, more often than not, struggling to one degree or another with the effects of sleep or some type of fatigue at this very moment, or they will be at some point in their day. And so what? Everybody's sleepy. Pick yourself up, shake it off, get with it, keep going. I've been told and reminded that everyone who accomplished anything probably had to push through feeling crappy and needing sleep in order to get it done. So a lack of sleep is no big deal, right? Or is it? In point of documented fact from multiple unimpeachable sources, fatigue, lack of sleep, and being tired have caused untold destruction and loss of life. Here are just a few examples. Prince William Sound Oil Spill On March 24, 1989, in Prince William Sound, an oil tanker called the Exxon Valdez ran aground. The supertanker spilled 10.8 million gallons of crude oil. This oil had a devastating impact on 1,300 miles of coastline. Two billion 1989 US dollars were spent on cleanup. Why did this happen? Well, just as with any large-scale disaster, there were many points of failure. In this case, the tanker's crew was working with little or no sleep prior to leaving port. And at the time of impact, the person at the helm was the third mate, who was unqualified to be in that position. Almost everyone else, given their sleep deprivation, had hit the sack. Bhopal, India, deadly chemical release. At around 1 a.m. on December 3rd, 1984, 3,800 people instantly passed in their sleep in Bhopal, India. What happened? Due to fatigue, workers were unaware that there was a leak in a valve that was allowing a tank, already containing methyl isocyanate gas, to also be filled with water. The water Entering the tank already filled with this deadly chemical caused dangerous increased pressures inside the tank. The resulting overpressure caused the tank to fail catastrophically, releasing a plume of poison gas into the residential neighborhood located just outside the fence. 3,800 perished immediately. Another 15,000 also died in the hours and days that followed. 600,000 were injured. Injuries included lung damage and blindness, among other serious conditions. And more? Other notable calamities that were in large part caused by a lack of sleep and the loss of alertness and clear thinking that go along with it include the 1979 Three Mile Island nuclear disaster, the Chernobyl nuclear disaster in 1986, the grounding of the Princess Star in 1995, multiple airline crashes, multiple train crashes, thousands of vehicle accidents, and countless other industrial or other mishaps. Yep, something as simple as sleep has caused and will continue to cause enormous destruction and huge loss of life. Where's the harm?
There are several things we as individuals and as a culture don't pay as much attention to as we should. Things that if given a little more attention and mindfulness might make a huge difference to us and the people we know and love. But they are so common, so frequent, so routine. We often think, where's the harm? It happens all the time. It's normal. And it often boils down to simple choices we make when the situations might appear. Having one more drink or not. Deciding whether or not to experiment with recreational drugs. Frankly, alcohol and other recreational drugs impair judgment. So, don't we need to understand that once we begin to imbibe, we might not be smart enough to stop before the line is crossed. And then, there's allowing our anger to direct our thoughts and actions. Many of us can't accept the truth of the matter. We are responsible for what we do and how we react. When we become angry, nobody made us mad. We chose to be. And then there's whether to choose to lie or telling the truth. And in a time when suicide has become one of the biggest killers, just being kind, paying attention to others, maintaining a good social connection, being willing to listen and help, or just smiling at a stranger can and does make a difference. Now there are many little ounces of wisdom that might be gleaned from these events and perspectives, but may I suggest for right now we focus on just this one. What really matters? What will make the difference? Sometimes we just don't know because life can't always be accurately predicted. Because it seems to just happen. But sometimes it can be easily calculated accordingly. Avoiding a tragedy can be as simple and unfortunately common as choosing to or not to respond to a text while you're driving or letting some needed repair wait just a little longer. Hey, sometimes this stuff works out just fine. At least until Murphy's Law comes into play. That unavoidable law of nature that always does, eventually. And one of the strongest truths of Murphy's Law is that you will not always be the exception. Because, as the law states, when something can go wrong, it will. And in the subtext we read, this time, next time, or one of the times after that. No exceptions. So here's the ounce. An ounce, in this case, is a simple yet perplexing, exigent two-part question. What matters most? And are you giving the attention it requires? And that's it. An ounce, submitted for your consideration. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, and you think we were worthy of it, please give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe. We need all the help we can in convincing the algorithms of <laughs> and convincing the algorithms out there that we're worth watching. Thanks.